Hi, I'm Katie Halcrow with Power Up Prep, and I'm super excited today to take you through some tips and strategies to help you power up your ACT. If this is your first time with us, first, welcome. Second, check out the link below. There, you're going to find the ACT questions and the note sheets that you can do along with these videos. All right, so let's get those materials together and we're gonna be ready to power up. Okay, so now we're gonna dig into some of our strategies for math. You might notice that I am holding a calculator. That is because number one thing that I definitely want you to do on this test is use your calculator. And you're gonna especially use your calculator with fractions, but you are going to use your calculator whenever possible on the test because it is too easy to make very minor mistakes when trying to calculate by hand or in your head. And it also, it's faster to use your calculator. Um, so I've had students resist this in the past. They've wanted to do it. They know their times tables, et cetera, but it's really not worth it. You wanna make sure that you're accurate, accurate and you want to do things as quickly as possible. So doing things in your head slows you down. Um, so use your calculator, especially with fractions. For example, let's do a question. Okay, so in this example, we see two and seven fifteenths plus four and four twenty-fifths, and then we have five answer choices below. So what we are going to do is we are going to literally plug this into our calculator, but we can't write two and seven fifteenths in our calculator because our calculator doesn't do things like that. But what we can do is write two, so in my calculator, I can type two plus seven divided by 15 plus four plus four divided by 25. And then when I do that, I get an answer with a decimal, right? I get six point, and then there's a long decimal afterward. Okay, so now I know based on these answer choices that it's not going to be D or E because it's not going to be an answer choice that has a seven in front because there's a six in front. So now what I want to do is I'm going to divide those, I'm gonna put those fractions in my calculator just like I did for the first round. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in six plus 11 divided by 25 into the calculator. Does that decimal match our first one? Nope, it doesn't. Okay, so now we're gonna do our next one, six and 47 divided by 75. Does that match? Yep, it does, bingo. So now we have our answer and all we've done is use our calculator. So we don't have to worry that we've made a minor mistake on any of our math. We don't have to worry about finding a common denominator or anything like that. Um, as a math tutor, which I do, I would tell you, I really want you to understand how to do fractions. It's super important to know how to find a common denominator and multiply and divide fractions, etc. But as your ACT tutor, I say, no, it doesn't matter. All that matters on the ACT test is that you get a question right. And so if you use your calculator and get the question right, that's a win. So use your calculator. Okay. So that's strategy number one, big important strategy, always use your calculator. Strategy number two is you want to use the answer choices that they give you to guess and check. So an example for this question would be like you see here, three X plus five divided by four equals two X minus five. Now this is probably a simpler question for many of you, but some of you have forgotten how to solve equations. Well, you don't actually have to know how to solve equations in order to do this. You just need to know how to plug things in and use your handy dandy calculator. So what you're going to do is for X, you're going to pick one of the numbers to plug in. And what I would recommend is starting with the middle number. When you're guessing and checking, I want you to start with the middle number because the middle number um, will eliminate the number of options you need to try. So if you, um, if for example, in this choice, four is too small, then we know we can pick five or six um, and do that. So you eliminate the number of options you're going to need to try, which helps you do the questions a little bit faster. Um, and, the, and when they give you answer choices on the ACT, they are almost always in ascending order. So they start with the smallest choice and then they go to the biggest choice if they're numbers. So starting with that middle answer will be starting with the, the answer that is in the middle of the numbers. So if it's not correct, you only have two choices to try if it's you need to go smaller or two choices to try if you need to go bigger. For this particular example, if we start with four, then we plug four in for X. So we do three times four, which is 12. Um, 12 plus five is 17. 17 divided by four, we are using our calculator. 
So 17 divided by 4 is 4.25. Now, that's one side of the fraction. If we plug in 4 for 2x minus 5, we get 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 5, which is 3. Okay, so we don't have a big enough number yet because that second side is too little. So let's go down one. We're going to go to number 5. Uh, or not number 5, but choice D, which is 5. Um, so if we plug in 5, we get 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 5, which is 20, divided by 4, which gives us 5. Okay, so we have 5 for that side. And then on the other side, we have 2 times 5, which is 10, minus 5, which is 5. So then we have 5 equals 5. So that is the correct answer for our question. And we got that without doing any math. We just got it by plugging in numbers and using our calculator. Okay, so then strategy number three. Sometimes we can't use the answer choices to plug in for numbers because the answer choices have variables and so does the question. But there's actually a way to still make use of your calculator um, and do both uh, and get the question right. Um, so when there are variables in the question and in the answer choices, what you're going to do is you're going to pick real numbers for the variables and then you're going to plug that into the question where there's a variable and you're gonna plug it into the answer choices where there's a variable. Um, two things to remember about this is you don't want to choose numbers 0, 1, or negative 1 because they can be wonky. They can get you the wrong answer. They're, they're, just don't choose 0, 1, or negative 1. Choose any other number, just not those. Um, and then number two is if there are more, if there's more than one variable in the question um, and answer choices, you want to pick a different number for each variable. So if the question had both x and y in the question and the answer choices, you would want to make sure that you're plugging in different numbers for x and for y. So like x would be 2 and y would be negative 3, something like that. All right, so you have another question in front of you right now. 12x to the third minus 8x squared divided by 4x. Okay, so let's say that you don't know how to do this problem, right? Um, so you don't, you don't remember the math of it. That's okay because we can use this strategy of plugging in real numbers for the variables and then solving to see what the answer should be. Okay, so in this question, let's say we're gonna choose two as at what x equals. So x equals two for us in this question, which means we're gonna plug in two for all the x's in the, answer, in the question and two for all of the x's in the answer choices. So when we plug in two for x, we have 12x to the third. So you're gonna plug this into your calculator, right? You're gonna put two to the third into your calculator, which is two times two times two, which gives us eight. And then 12 times eight gives us 96. So we have 96 for the first part of the, the numerator. And then we're gonna do eight times two to the second. So that's eight times four, which is 32. So then we have 96 minus 32 gives us 64. And then we've got the denominator 4x, so that would be 4 times 2. So we have 8, so 64 divided by 8 is going to give us 8 as the answer. So now what we're doing is we're like, oh, okay, well, if we plug in 2 for x, we should get an 8 for our answer. So what we're going to do in all of the rest of these answer choices is plug in 2 for x and see if we get 8. Okay. So in A, we have 3x squared minus 4x. So that means 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2. Okay, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 4 times 2, which is 8. So we have 12 minus 8, which is 4. So A doesn't work. Okay, then we have B. So we know that 2 to the third is 8. So 8 times 8 gives us 64. And then 2 to the second is 4. So then we have 4 times 4. Well, 64 minus 16 is not gonna get us anywhere close to eight. So we know that it's not B. So then we turn to C. C is three X squared minus two X. So X squared is, you remember? Yep, so X squared is gonna be four, two times two is four, times three is 12. So we have three times, so we have 12 minus two times two is four, 12 minus four is eight. So C is our answer. Just to double check that it doesn't work for another answer, we could go through D and E as well, but we know that C works. And so it's probably unlikely that another answer choice will work. But like I said, just to double check, you could go and plug in the numbers for the last two answer choices as well. This one does turn out to be C as the answer. Okay, so 
In this video, we talked about using your calculator. We used our calculator in every question that we did. Um, we talked about using our answer choices to guess and check, and we talked about how if there's variables in the question and in the answer choices, we can plug in a real number so that we can use our calculator to help us get the answer right. All right, let's go on to some more strategies. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of our curriculum or other tips and tricks that can help you power up your ACT.